and welcome to Algebra 2 tutorial. In this video we are continuing our look at exponential functions. We started that last time and we had a very basic way of um, doing some of those problems and today we get to shorten that by a whole lot. Um, so we're going to look at the shortcut for doing exponential functions. We're going to again compare it to linear growth so we can kind of see how the equation works. Then we've got two models that we're going to take a look at a growth model, exponential growth, and a decay model for exponential decay. Both of those are two good applications we want to look at. So first, let's make this process shorter because what we were doing last time was pretty long. So we're going to do the same problem. Suppose you start off with a $40,000 salary and you get a 5% raise each year. So how much money would we be getting after five years. So we're going to have a table here. So we're going to have time on one side and then we're going to have our salary on the other. <clears throat> and I'm all, the, all the math is going to be over here to keep our table looking nice. So when we start the job at year zero, we are getting $40,000. And after one year, we get a raise. And so the old math we did was 40,000 plus 5% of 40,000. Now we can simplify that. So let me show you how we can simplify that. We have two terms, this one, the 40,000, and this one over here, the 0 0.05 times 40,000. And if you notice, they both have a 40,000 in common. So we can factor out that 40,000. So we'll get 40,000 on the outside. And on the inside, well, if I pull the 40,000 out, there is actually a 1 left over plus, and if I pull the 40,000 out, there is a 0 0.05 left over. Looking better already. And then that is just 40,000. We can actually do the parentheses, that's 1.05. That is much easier to do right here than all of this. And so let's do that. Let me pull up my calculator. Uh, 40,000 times 1.05. Sorry about that. Let me pull up the calculator here. And we get <clears throat> 42,000, which hopefully that looks familiar. 42,000. And so we're going to do that one more time so you can kind of see how that works. So now for our second year, we did 42,000 plus 0 0.05 times 42,000. And so now you can see that they both have a 42,000 in common. So I would pull out, factor out that 42,000. You'd be left over with a 1 plus the 0 0.05, so that's 1.05. And now that's all we have to do. 42,000 times 1.05 gives us 44, 1. Now, for the next ones, I want to start using this shortcut. I don't have to do all the factoring because that seems to work out the exact same way. So for the third one, this is now going to be shorter. We're just going to take the 44,100 and multiply by 1.0. That's much, much shorter. So 44,000, one, uh, sorry, 100 times 1.05. And we get 46, 305. And then if we want to keep going, we have to multiply this number again times 1.05. So 46,305 
times 1.05. Now that is really easy on the calculator. You just hit times. It'll take the previous answer, 1.05, 48, 620. And if we want to do it again, we just times by 1.05. You can see this pattern is getting really, really easy now, not nearly as much work. Now let's say we want to make this even easier. What if I want to continue this all the way down to 10? Now I don't want to continue this process 10 more or five more times to get down to 10, so let's simplify this. So let's take a look. What are we doing? Every time we are multiplying the only new step is to multiply by 1.05. So theoretically, I start from the beginning, 40,000. Then the only new step is to multiply by 1.05. So times 1.05, times 1.05, times 1.05, dot, 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 dot. And we would do that to get down to 10. We would hit times 1.05 10 times. And there's a very easy way of writing that. It is just 40,000 times 1.05. And if we're doing this 10 times, it's to the power of 10. And so this will give us the 10th year in our table. So let's do that. 40,000 times 1.05. Raise it to the power of 10. And we are now at 65,155. And so our equation becomes 40,000 times 1.05 to the power of x. And that will give us any year we want. We don't have to do any of this type of thing again we've simplified it down to an input and an output equation. All right, so that's what we're going to be starting to take a look at, writing this equation right here to make our lives much, much easier. So to do that, we're going to first take a quick summary look at linear versus exponential growth and that equation that we just did. So when you're doing a linear growth, a straight line, you are adding something every time. You're going over one and then up two, over one, up two. Every time you're adding the slope over and over again, like you're making $10 an hour. Every hour you get another $10, 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. Plus 10. That's linear. However, in exponential growth, you multiply by something over and over again. Like the previous example we had, it was 1.05 times another 1.05 times another 1.05. It multiplies over and over again. And that's the big difference between linear and exponential. Linear, you are adding the same term over and over again. Exponential, you're multiplying. And so here is our big exponential equation. It's written there. Let me write it one more time. A times B to the X. And so A is where you are starting. What do you start with? Either your starting population or your starting money, whatever it is, that is your beginning point. And B is one plus your interest rate. All right, it's usually some sort of percent. Um, so that's what you want to look for, some sort of percent. And with all that factoring, we always had to have the one in front. So you do have to add one to that interest rate, that percentage. And then that will give you an equation for an exponential growth. All right, so we're going to use that with a few application problems now with growth and decay. So first, our growth model. So the city of Fresno has a population of around 500,000. One research company estimates Fresno will have an annual growth rate, so that's important, of 
what could the population be in 10 years? So our numbers here, right now we have 500,000. That's going to be our A value because that's what we're starting with. Our growth rate of 1%, that is going to give us our B once we add 1 to it. So our equation is going to be Y equals our beginning value, 500,000 times, now my B value. So the B value is equal to 1 plus the interest rate. So there's our rate, our growth rate is 1%. Remember, turn that into a decimal. That is 0 0.01. So the B value will be 1.01 .01 to the power of x. So what could the population be in 10 years? So 10 years is time. That is going to be an x value. So x is time. And y is population. So we're simply going to plug that in. So it'll be 500,000 times 1.01 .01 to the power of 10. And all we have to do now is plug that into the calculator, and it will tell us. Let's turn this on. 500,000 times 1.01 .01 to the power Sorry about that. Let me erase that for you. There we go. 1.01 .01 raised to the power of 10. So we will be 552,311 people. You probably don't want any decimals because you can't have part of a person. Uh, that's a little weird. So there we have. That's how many people we think we'll have after 10 years using this model. Now, one more interesting question for this. Estimate when Fresno will have a population of 600,000. So this right here is a Y value. So that number, 600,000, is going to go in for Y not for x, because x is time and y is population. So that will be 600,000 is equal to 500,000, 1.01, but we don't know what x is. Now, here's the thing. We want to solve for x. We can't do that yet. That's coming in a couple of videos. It'll take a little while before we have enough skills to get x by itself. So right now, all we can do is estimate by doing a little guessing and checking. We know 10 years isn't long enough, because that's only 552,000. So we might try 15 years or 20 years and just start to guess and check because we don't know. And the calculator has a really good um, way to do that, actually. It isn't too bad. So you type it in once, times 1.01. .01, to the power of, so now I'm going to take a guess. Let's try 15. Will 15 years be long enough? So that gets me to 580, not long enough. So instead of typing the whole thing in, just hit second, enter. That brings up the whole command again. Then go back, and instead of 15, let's type in 20. Ah, there we got to 600,000, but I'm a little too high, 610. I'm going to back up a year. So instead of 20, let's try 19. Does that get me to 600,000? There I'm at 604,000. Can I back it up one more year to 18 years? Now, see, there I'm not quite there. I'm 598,000. So it looks like I have to go 19 years to get up to 600,000. Is it exact? No, because it's 604,000. It's not exact, but it's about 19 years. And later, we'll be able to solve this equation exactly, but for now, we can only estimate. All right, so that is our growth rate. Let's take a look at one more, our decaying model. 
So the growth rate is getting bigger. Decay is going to be getting smaller. So not everything gets bigger. So let's suppose you buy a car for $30,000, and the dealership says that most new cars depreciate by about 10% a year. So hopefully you know a car, if you buy it new, the next year it will not be worth nearly as much. The value does go down. And so using a model of 10% a year, we're going to be see what our car is worth after it looks like five years. So y is equal to, first is our a value, our starting. And so we are starting at 30,000. So that's our a. And then we're depreciating, that means going down, by 10%. So our B value, here's where this is slightly different. It's still going to be 1 plus the interest rate, but this time our interest rate is going to be negative because it's going down. It's depreciating. So this 10% is technically negative. Make sure you make it a decimal, 0.10. And so our B value, 1 plus negative 0.1, is actually 0.9. That's the most thing that people get confused right there, is that the interest rate is negative, but that means you still add 1 to it, and so you get a positive decimal, 0.9 to the power of x. And we want to know how much is it worth in five years. So x is time, and y is the cost of our car, or the worth of our car. So this will be y is equal to 30,000 times 0.9 to the power of 5. So let's see how much it's worth. 30,000 times 0.9 raised to the power of 5. So after 5 years, it'll only be worth 17,714 dollars. Um, the cents don't really matter too much when you're talking about the worth of a car, so I might just leave it right there, 17,000. So estimate the second question. So again, estimate how long it would take for your car to be worth only $10,000. Remember, that's a Y value because it's a dollar amount. So 10,000 is equal to, oops, don't need the prints yet, 30,000, one more zero, times 0.9 to the power of X. And we don't know the time, that's what we want. Sadly, again, this is an equation that we can't completely solve yet, so all we can do is sort of estimate by guessing and checking. So I've already sort of got the statement in the calculator, so I'm just going to hit second enter. And let's see, five years wasn't long enough. That took me to 17,000. So let's try, I don't know, eight years? Let's see if eight years is long enough. That got us to 12,9, so not long enough. Let's try 10 years. That looks pretty good. 10 years, we're at 10,400. I'm guessing if I try 11, it won't do it for me, but I gotta try to see if I can get closer. Yeah, that went too far, 9,000. So it looks like 10 years is a good estimate. 10 years. Again, that's only an estimate for how long it would take, and a few videos will be able to figure that out exactly. All right, so the two main important things here are the growth model and the decay model for exponential functions using that shortcut equation. So here are a few for you to practice. Try those out. See if you can use that formula for an exponential equation. Good luck.